So let me know if it's now okay. It looks yeah way smoother now. Yeah okay. Okay. The, uh, I thought it was automatically reducing the resolution depending on the the bitrate. So that should be fine. Just let me know if everything is fine and and, and I will get started. Okay. Super. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for the help and the, the patience. So um, I will make a, a brief introduction to this uh, streaming. Um, so I, I got in touch with the guys from iAnimate and they allow me to stream while I was working on my assignment, which is very kind of them. So I will just explain you rapidly what I'm doing. So I will be animating this character. So it's a character from the guys at uh, iAnimate. It's uh, an online school, an online animation school with mentorship. So you currently apply there and uh, then you have like a lesson per week and a review per week with uh, like world-class animators that explain you uh, what to do to enhance your animation. So this is where I am now. So I have a review on video that I won't be sharing because I'm not supposed to do it. And basically what I will have to do now is to uh, refine uh, this blocking. So I will get rid of the stage, the background, everything, and just keep this this way. So the camera uh, is more or less set up and with smooth movement and i'm working on the blocking so it's pretty detailed um the um, the process is to detail as much as possible the blocking so that when we switch to spline when we will start playing with the curve we don't have to uh yeah to 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 be bothered that much with timing it will be mostly smoothing the movements accelerating the pose and stuff like that so that's the the way it is for the time being after so it's week four or five now i think it's week five i will just save it as a new file here and uh i will show you the the previous blocking if you will um so you've seen this one. This one is not that. I will show you one of the first so that you can see uh, the evolution of it. Uh, this one was already pretty detailed. But here you can see, oh, no, it's not the, the good one, I guess. Let me check. Yeah. Maybe this one. Yeah, okay. On this one, I didn't even have the the, the camera blocked. You can see that I was missing, for example, the hair poles here when she's in the air. I was lacking of a step here. The dummy wasn't even in the in the animation, and there were a few, there were a few anticipation missing here. So we just jumped directly into the this one, the latest one, and let you know what I'm going to do. So I will still be blocking. So. Uh, this is a rig uh, I I rebuilt because they are pitching in Maya. And so when I asked if I could join the 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 school, I told them I will be uh, rebuilding the rigs they would provide. So uh, they have provided me the Maya rig. I exported them as FBX, and so you you get the deformation rig from there and I rebuilt the whole controllers. Uh, so it's like you have just a, 
the deformation armature all messed up because of the FBX and uh, I had to, to rebuild everything. So I rebuilt two rigs in like one week or so. And I had some help from um, Wayne Dixon. Uh, you might know him. He works at CG Cookie as an animator. And so he he he's an he's an alumni from iAnimate, so a former student there, and uh, he started. Um, he he helped me by polishing the script so that looked better, and so that we can share the rig later on with iAnimate. Um, because hopefully we would like uh, there will be more uh, students using Blender there, and basically open the school to Blender users uh, because being an animator is not software based like any kind of art and you can animate in Blender or in uh, Maya the same way. Maya is more powerful if I have to compare but uh, you can do uh, pro level animation in, in Blender without a problem. And I do use it professionally in production, so it's not uh, it's not a problem. So I will have to add like here another breakdown where she's leaning forward. Here it's okay. I got a recovery. I might need here another one. I need to review the the different poses. Then she give. Um, a spinning elbow here, recover, jump. So I need to, here, uh, you can see I have only one keyframe, so it's it's animated on once here. And I have a big uh, motion difference in the arm, so I have to blend this a bit. And basically what I will have to do is the note from my mentor uh, it's Jeremy Collins he is working at Blizzard currently and uh, as a art director so that's pretty cool and he, he has worked on Tangled and on probably with a chance of Meatball and he's a close friend of uh, Dave Gibson and I'm a huge fan of Dave Gibson that work at Riot's now at he has been working at uh, uh, Blizzard for years on Overwatch mainly and for movies like Audi and stuff like that. So, uh, I, I love just watching the Beamer Real on Evo. That's amazing. Exactly what I would like to do professionally. He did the rigs and, and all the animation. So this is kind of what I'm doing uh, on Noara. So here we go. So I, I'm just checking the chat for a sec. Open one more time. So to be honest, I've been working with Blender. Uh, I've never learned Maya and I do have a job I do make uh, a living with Blender, so learning Blender is not a problem. You you should not be afraid of the, the software or the lack of knowledge you have in other softwares. This is not a problem. Uh, Blender is a fantastic learning tool, and a good animator will be a good animator within uh, Maya. You will just have a couple of weeks to learn animation tools in Maya, and that's it. Like a good sculptor, it doesn't matter whether you are using ZBrush, 3D Coat, or uh, Blender. Yes, ZBrush is a special specialized sorry, software, so it's more powerful. But a good sculptor is a good sculptor. That's why you may always try to learn art, uh, the, the very base of art, like uh, drawing, uh, sculpting, uh, photography and all these kind of things. The softwares are only tools and that's it. 
So I will just check my review. Yeah, I need her to lean forward. So generally what I do is that I will favorize the, um, the center of gravity here to be moved first. So here I will move it forward like that. And, and stop to go forward like this. So this foot will start to raise a bit more because she's pushing onto it. And I should have a little more hip. So what I generally do is that I uh, go in the action editor. I don't use the dope sheet here. Uh, and I will uh, insert a keyframe for all the controllers so that I won't have sliding foots or stuff like this whenever I'm walking afterwards. So I will, um, so the, the idea is to, to track one point of the body here, like the head, for example. Um, so you can see that the, in the first pass I, I done, I was uh, making her like leaning a bit backward before she threw the punch. Um, but we figured that the, um, uh, the anticipation of the jab here was in the the forward step. She's getting down to gather energy and then tap. Okay. So here I just need to break down a bit the movement. Okay. So it's gonna be like pretty straightforward. I will fight here with this. So I have a, a shortcut on the, the overlay so that I can hide the controllers. Uh, it's faster than hiding them one by one. Okay, so it's gonna be subtle on this one for sure. Because the arm are not moving that much. I'm just checking, maybe raise the, the shoulder a bit. I will just slightly move the, the fingers. So just to have some variation from one pose to the other, okay. And I will pass it here so that it doesn't look clear that she came from one pose, get into another and get back to the other pose. So we, we use reference the, in the, the first uh, lessons, we have to gather reference for first. Uh, filming ourselves uh, and, and trying to find any piece of reference, whether it's um, it's from video games, movies, whatever you want, okay? Um, so here there's a slight overshoot of the arm, I don't know if you can see it, extension of the arm. I will just watch my uh, yeah, I'm using the, the uh, a mouse for the time being. I don't I don't like to animate with the tablet, but I, I have a Cintiq here. So I'm working on the Cintiq. 
uh, regarding uh, your question about how much frame. So we had, uh, they asked us to stay within 100 frames. Currently, uh, I'm at uh, 160. How it works is that when you do your blocking, uh, you don't care about timing. You just set the main poses of your character. So the like the this first jab, then this punch, then the elbow. Okay, you just put them like every five frames. Then you get uh, you put one or two breakdown like this position before to uh, throw the elbow, etc. And then you can see I've I mean here the the timing is almost done. There there might be a a bit of revision, and this is what will set the time. It's the fact that the animation works or not. Uh, when you work for video games, you may have uh, what, what we do for Noara, for example, is that we say that the hit on an attack must occur within frame 15. Okay, so uh, the animator, we are two animating on Noara, uh, knows that between frame 15 and 20 maximum, he has to hit the target. So all the anticipation moving forward, etc., must be done in this. Uh, in this range, if it does make sense for you. Now I'm animating at uh, 30 frames per second. And uh, in, in video game, it's, it's pretty common to see that now because it will be more or less uh, interpolated to 60 frames per second. And it doesn't mean that you can't divide your animation in uh, in 24 frame. It's just a little faster, you know, just a little smoother. So we need more uh, more things here. I will just watch my review for a second. So I'm watching my review at the at the same time. Yeah, okay. So what I will do is that I will uh slightly raise this leg too, like she's uh lighter on her leg and I will bring back this and I will also bring it back here like she's gathering energy so based on the previous breakdown I, I'm slightly uh, modifying the the pose here so that she gather more energy And I try to make sure she's protecting her face. I will just switch off the light on the side here because it's super painful to have those uh, lights in the face. And I don't don't think the benefit of the screaming is in my face. Okay. Yeah. So now we we have this move in so I just have to figure then the timing whether she's uh, jumping into the next pose I think it should be shorter here like closer to the next one so th this is how you you set the time at this stage like she's uh, starting to move forward and she executes the punch pretty rapidly. As soon as she starts moving, as soon as you step, like in boxing, if you start stepping forward and you don't throw a punch, uh, 
that's quite uh, easy to read for your opponent and you will take a punch in, in return for sure. Yeah, sure, I'm doing it during uh, more or less my free time, yeah. Uh, I'm not paid to work for, to take classes. So uh, the classes for me start at 6 a.m. in the morning and I generally animate from 7 to 9 in the morning uh, for those classes. Uh, this is how I generally break down my, uh, my day of work. If I'm working on personal projects like the YouTube video courses uh, or things like this, uh, I do it early in the morning before I start my labor day, let's say, uh, working with the team at Noara, at Atypic Studio. Um, so generally the Monday I work for myself, you know, making the YouTube videos. So I've just finished the, the video of the chain rig uh, that I will publish tomorrow morning, I think. And uh, and now I'm doing this uh, in this uh, time frame, but uh, tomorrow morning I will work on Noir uh, instead. That's how it works. Yeah, okay. So on this pose, I will raise the elbow more like that and uh, I will have to compensate with the shoulder too so si since it's a, a jab to prepare for the the cross the right cross you don't make a big anticipation okay uh, if it was a big orkish wire or something maybe that would uh, make sense but here i want to to keep her move like super straight and maybe i will favorize a bit the next pose here that it goes a little faster. Tac, tac. Okay. So also what I, uh, I do when I do this kind of thing is to sing the combo in a way, just make noise with my mouth and and see if uh, it does sounds good. So here I'm just checking if I'm around the thirty frames per second. So currently OBS is. Uh, um is uh for sure using some of my computer but uh, I, i'm close to the 30 fps and uh, whenever you're displaying all the keys it does go down blender you can see i'm my 22 here if i hide the keys i get to 27 28 and it's the same with the curve so when you are watching your animation just click on the selection only and if you don't have any bone selected it won't display any any key here uh yeah cascader i've i've seen the yeah i know about it i just downloaded the beta this morning but i haven't opened it uh, right now Yeah, I'm using, so uh, am I working on the new course? I will start recording the new course, the animation course, end of September. And I hope to release it for Christmas. When I'm blocking, I'm working in step mode. So all my curve or all my keys are like that. T, constant interpolation, okay? For every single key so that there is no interpolation. All right. I will watch my review. So I, I think the beginning is okay. 
it reads well. Um, the, the, the pose are, are okay too. So I'm watching the, the review again. Okay. Yeah, okay. So on this pose here. Just getting a bit of of lag of the L. So the the hits, you know that the, you you may have heard of the what's leading the animation, etc. So for example, in the end here, it's the head that leads the animation. It's like we are pulling her head on the side. Why here? It's the hips. Okay, so the um, the hips will move first or will drag uh, the whole body, will pull the body, sorry, the chest will follow and then the, the head. So I slightly pull the head backwards and it will reach its position like a couple of frames later here. And I should maybe um, on the recovery here make it slightly lower. So it's like, you, you may, may think it's like nip ticking at this level, but uh, we've spent a lot, a lot of time working on those poses. And the idea is to make the, the splining way easier after a while, so. And since it's, you know, a school assignment, even if there is a timeline to do it, um, the idea is to get the, the best result possible. We're not into like production. So in Noara, for example, we are trying to get the best result as possible, like always. But if you spend more than uh, one day and a half or two days on an animation, that's that's hard on the budget and hard on the on the production. So it's not exactly the same philosophy here. I, I'm not uh, focusing on. I'm focusing mainly on, on quality here of animation. So here I need uh, another breakdown. Can you look? Oh, you you mean uh, I was not reading the the chat. I was uh, reading my review from my mentor. What I have to 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 modify. But yeah, next time I will I will play the animation. So uh, I need another breakdown here where she she start moving forward. Okay, 
because there is a, a big change in the foot. That's hard to tell, but so I will use the auto um, easing here for a couple of uh, frames so that it, it will help me getting it right, maybe. So she, she's like pushing up a, a lot here. So maybe it should be a little less right there. Okay. And also I feel like she's moving forward a lot. Feels like the, the, the foot is moving at the same speed as the the body here. It's way too too much here. I make the the arm drag a bit between this one and this one, lowering, okay. Like she, she's raising her, her feet, uh, her, her fist as, as she's uh, raising her body, so the arm will drag a bit. And then they will they will follow yeah <laughs> yeah, I'm planning on releasing on Christmas. <laughs> That's the plan. That's not the reality. You can also use the motion pass mode to see the animation curve in your world. Yeah, I know. Is this for game? No, this is just a, a school assignment. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm at school, by the way. Yeah, I rebate the, the, the rig. Uh, I don't know if I have the, the original file so that you, you will see uh, how it was. I don't think so, but uh, no. Uh, I can show you what I did at the X. Basically, I've imported the ring this way, so it will take a few seconds or a few minutes, <laughs> a few seconds, I guess. And it, it was like that. Uh, yeah, you see, all bones are like uh, 
with strange orientation, they are locators, uh, they are not all bind to the model, so it might not be the right one, maybe this one. Yeah, this one. So you, you can see they are like this, and you have to pin everything and, and rebuild everything anyway. So it's, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the rig basically looks like that, so you have to reorder all the bones, figure out what they are made for, because some of them are just uh, locators, other are current deformation bones, and uh, yeah, uh, make some cleanup so that it took. Something like that, in the end, you know. Something we are a bit more used to. Okay, so that's it. So I used the same technique uh, as in my course, uh, but with some improvements. And uh, yeah, I'm working on something in this regard too. So we'll see <laughs> later uh, uh, this year, probably. But uh, I'm dealing with some stuff and uh, I should be able to share. So well, the, most of the, the thing I'm covering on my YouTube channels are some animation tips with new, new stuff I haven't done in the course. But I may come with uh, more content uh, a, a, li a little later. <clears throat> no, it's it's not a matter of it. It looks cleaner. It's uh, their their rigs are awesome, but they are made in Maya. Whenever you are exporting from Maya into FBX, FBX and re-importing into Blender, it goes crazy. And you just get the deformation bones, you don't get the, the control armature. Be sure that their rigs are like pro-level rigs, they are professional rigs made by people working for Disney, Pixar, Blizzard, Ubisoft. So <laughs> their rigs are way better than mine but mine is working for sure so that's uh that's okay so here uh, a little more interesting pose i have to find a breakdown yeah between those two okay so this is where you go to your reference. So yeah, yeah, the the, uh, the ID of those streaming here is that it allows me to share some new content for her. But um, also, I want to promote what uh, I animate does. Uh, because uh, I do feel like a lot of Blender users won't have the idea to go into this kind of school, whether it's iAnimate or another school, uh, because of uh, the fact that they are most of the time using Blender or like all the time using Blender. And so it's, uh, yeah, I want to show you that you can get there uh, even if you are using Blender. So here I have a, a reference. You can you can use Keyframe Pro. It's free to watch all your reference uh, videos. It's better because you can watch them frame by frame. Um, okay. So it's uh, yeah, it's better. So here I'm watching all things. So you can 
and, and it makes sense. You can clearly see that he, he's pushing on his leg here and his butt is when he hit his butt is almost or his hips are almost still when the, the elbow touch because they have made uh, most of their move before. Okay, so here the, the, the hips are at their extreme, the chest is almost there and the, the, the elbow is still floating. So you really have to accentuate this, uh, check out the, the curve of the body here. So instead of going like uh, pressing like here, shift E, and uh, you can see that it, it looks like garbage here. Um, and just see how it looks. I will uh, favorize this pose, meaning that I will, since I have only one frame here, I will favorize this pose. So I will press Shift E, and here in the breakdown, I will go like in to thirty percent or something. But I will increase the rotation here, and I, I will start um, rotating my character. So I really want to, in the in this frame, to get uh, an uh, okay. I can I can't draw from them, but a nice curve like that with the elbow ready to park to to go uh, through the through this this guy here. So I will. Um, I will move the hips like that, I'll take them a little bit. So I, I start with what we call the IK controller of the, of the chest here, okay, and the hips. And then if I need, uh, I will slightly rework the pose with those controllers. Okay. So th these are FK uh, FK controller, meaning that they, you you just move them one by one while while those one move them all. So this is one of the improvement I've made uh, upon my rigs lately. I've also increased the the controllers uh, on the on the arms, and I've been playing a bit with. Um, corrective bones so here i have an issue you see and this is uh, because of the the way the rig is built and this is the kind of limitation you you won't have in maya for example and this is why uh, sometimes i feel like uh, i wish i I have time to, uh, that's, I will be fighting with the rig here just to get the, the right shape of the neck. This is when you reach the 180 degree threshold in Blender, but it goes like crazy like that. So I have to play with the main controller here. Yeah, that's that's really painful. But that's part of the job using Blender. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I look. Uh, Well, Rigify is a very good, uh, very, very good rigging solution. My spine rig is like 95% like the Rigify one. I have a couple of different setup. I wouldn't say that mine is better. Uh, I think the guy at Rigify, uh, that, that makes Rigify, they are Italian, I think, uh, if I remember well. I, I've seen one of their talk 
at the Blender conference. Um, there are pro riggers, like very, very high level riggers. So um, they, they know how it works. But uh, I think that Rigifies allows you to do too many things. And that's why I'm not using it. Because you get a rig with too many options. And this is why I, I also, this is one of the reasons I called my uh, rigging was the art of effective rigging. Because I feel like um, a complex rig or a good rig is not a rig that allow you to do a thousand things with your character. Uh, like there are, there are many features that you may use like once in a year or once in a lifetime. And so building uh, a rig that has those features that you have to key, etc. I think it's a, it's a mistake. I mean, that's a waste of time. That's how I feel. I absolutely don't like what I'm doing here. if it makes sense. So uh, I want her to look, look back to him, but she should have still her neck uh, aligned with the body. So that's that, uh, a common mistake. You have to, to keep the spine aligned and, and create a slight fall off within the, the different controllers. But if you break the neck, that, that's no good for sure. Also, uh, here I have an eye target, so I will put it here. But you don't want, you, you may never ever cut the, the pupils of your character like this. It will look fake. It's better to put it there, even if she's not looking at the the character okay it does work then cutting the eyes okay i think uh, i should drag a bit the, the shoulder still like that and the arm more, more like that And maybe I, I, so it's better. I don't like the shape of the of the torso here. I'd like to um, wait to have a better curve. I think I might use some um, deformation for the arm. Make a curve with it, you see. Bam. Like, uh, I'd like to bend her more, but uh, the pelvis here looks kind of weird. So here I'm mainly watching the, the camera view. So in game you are supposed to make your character looks nice from every angle, okay? But there will always be a, a favorized point of view. So when we have started the class, so it, it's game animation test classes, okay? Uh, so we are not working on acting, even if there is always a bit of acting in what you are doing. Um, that's not the purpose. Um, we are focusing on uh, body mechanics and physics. Mm. 
So what I will do that should help also, I will pause the, the hair. So that they will drag in the other direction, the opposite direction, I think. Okay. Something like that. Um, also, when you, you do this kind of animation, so I generally don't uh, animate the hair and the cloth at this stage. Uh, I generally do that uh, once the polishing is done because those are mostly um how to say it follow through animation or secondary motion if you if you will but um yeah here they they want us to to have like uh, a very detailed blocking and uh yeah i think it's uh for the sake of quality, it's, it's very interesting, and also for the sake of uh, training your eye, you know, uh, just asking yourself, oh, it should move at this stage in the air, at this stage in the when she spin, etc. That's a, a very good thing to uh, to also block the, the clothes and stuff, stuff like that. So I'm not blocking the the hoodie here because. The, the current model here is not the one I will be rendering. I'm using this model because it's less complex than this one. This one has a, a lot more geometry and so it's uh, slower to animate. That's just uh, the reason why I'm using this one. So here the, the knee should be like that. Okay, more like that. And I should add I can call her. Oh, now that that looks okay. Uh, the assignments are running on six weeks for this one and five weeks for the next one. But the first six weeks, the very first thing we, we did was only posing the character with uh, different reference. It was not working on this animation. And on week two, we were mainly focusing on planning the animation, gathering information and stuff like that. So. Uh, yeah, we, we didn't start, in a way, animating, make, making the, the character move in space, like that. Yeah, so yeah, I'm starting to feel the, the move motion here. So, uh, I, I feel it's better. The disarm, though, is strange because it's cutting the, the silhouette of the character. And the end goes down and then raise up so i feel like maybe i i rotated it a bit too much so i will try to make some kind of, of uh, elliptic shape here with the other arm you see something like that and so that she's um, Rotating, she made the elliptic movement and smash. Okay, because here you, you can see the elbows are aligned in the movement. Okay, so let's keep it like that. And then from there, what I, I will do, it's make a, a rebel lean with this one. 
Also, maybe I, I could pull the chest uh, back a little more. But um, yeah, you need to, to see if it fits the animation. For example, I, I've done this uh, like when she take her gun. Yeah, here you can see the rubber limbs for one frame. Like push, and and it will look smoother. So I want to do um, the same thing here. I will just uh, slightly change the shape of this arm. So I will go into my bone layers. I have tweaks for the arms here. So I've also slightly improved uh, my rubber limb si system uh, when I was uh, rigging this character. I've also rigged uh, another character which was like... Uh, like, I, I don't know to say, but like I, I never did this kind of monster before. It's pretty pretty big. Uh, I will show it probably later this month. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't feel like now it doesn't fit the, the shape here. Yeah. It's better like this. Maybe this one. And now it, we, we can't really see the difference. I should be pulling it like that or something, but it, it looks weird here. So I won't be doing it again. Well, isn't it hard? Uh, huh. That's yeah, that's complicated. I mean, that uh, it depends on how much time you want to to work on those assignments. That's that's it. If you're uh, this is something uh, I wanted to do for two years. It's eleven weeks, so it's almost three months. It's two months and a half, so uh, I thought I have a good time frame right now, but I will be honest with you, uh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> At the end of the week, I'm just like super exhausted. But uh, my girlfriend understand that, and she's very supportive. And so, you know, you, you, you put, whatever energy you, you can. Uh, I mean, I think half of the, the people working on, on the, the assignment are also have a job on the side. So I don't know if, if they work as much as I do, uh, both on their assignment and, and both at work, but uh, it's definitely something something you can do, you know? Uh, to 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 I mean, if you want to go in this description, what I will say is that it's like if you see any like top top end artist, like top tier artist, uh, if you watch their interview or, or whatever thing, they just grind the thing like nobody else. They are not more talented than anyone else. They just uh, work like every day for hours and hours since they were young, you know. And uh, that's the the only thing that matters. Especially when you are working on a computer, it's it's not like sport when maybe you would have a physical predisposition to be better at something like. Uh, uh, we were having this discussion if you are wrestling or something like this and, and you weight like 45 kilograms, that's going to be complicated for you to meet someone like is 100 uh, kilograms. 
but when you are in front of your computer and if both of your hands are working properly then you have no no excuses that uh, one will be better than you he has just put more energy than you uh, learning that's it so at at uh, at a point in my life i kind of sacrificed a lot let's say even if for me it wasn't sacrifice but uh, when i was in my uh, early 30 i would say from 25 to 32 33 i was working like 70 hours a week something like that so yeah you you miss <laughs> you may miss stuff in your life but uh, you can learn a lot of things. So when, when you, I mean, if if I had kids, or I don't know, uh, I know it would be like way harder, or you will miss like uh, seeing your your child growing and stuff like that. So. But we all have the same twenty four hours a day. <laughs> uh, you know, the same 24 hours per day in our life, so it's uh, all you spend them on Netflix or on Blender, you know. <laughs> okay. So you... There is not that much interaction between students, but we all uh, are here when watching the review of each uh, animation, which is a good thing because uh, you see other people with other uh, cultural background, other uh, affinity with animation. Some are into very realistic animation, for example, other are more into very stylized animation. There is one of the students that does uh, something that, like when I saw his blogging, I was like, wow, this is so cool because this is so, this is something I wouldn't have done at all. Whether it's the style of animation or the, the idea of the animation is like, uh, He's using his character to to uh, raise uh, to to uh, make spells. She's casting spells. Okay, she's like a, a, some kind of a, a warrior priest or warrior mage. I don't know. And I feel like there is a lot of maybe anime uh, inspiration behind this, and this is like super. You know, super refreshing to see some, something different than what you're doing, you know. So, but then there is no like, uh, your animation is better than uh, his animation or whatever, because that will be, I think, off topic and that wouldn't be something very, that would bring anything positive to the table. And, um, it's not like we are not like 12 years old, you know, the people there, I think it goes from 25 to maybe, uh, I don't know, 45 or 50. I don't know, no, not maybe 50, but so we are all grown adults and we are not competing. Okay. We are here to, um, to progress. I'm competing with myself, you know. I want to make an animation when I, I look, I look at it. I'm like, yeah, you, you wouldn't have done this like, uh, two months ago or something like that. And I, I want, I'm doing this because, uh, my, my work is getting reviewed by, uh, someone that has been doing animation for uh, 16 years in the biggest studio in the world, even if it's absolutely not what I'm aiming for. No, I don't want to be uh, the head animator of any big company, career-wise, but quality-wise, I want at some point to be 
so, so I'm not saying it to be pretentious, but I want to be the, the best in the world. I know it won't happen, but that's, you know, that's my goal. I want to make the, the, the best animation I can. So you need to learn from those guys. And, and this is what those online courses will, will bring you compared to buying a, a course on on Gumroad or whatever. If you do a one week of rigging with me, I think it will be way more expensive than buying my course, but you may, uh, it might be a better way to learn because uh, I can explain everything in depth and, and guide you and you can ask questions, ask feedback, uh, you know, uh, make proposal maybe to find other way to rigs or animate things. So, yeah. I, and you can have a broader talk than the fact that you're just animating also. Okay, so I think it, it, it looks decent now, this part of the shot. Just want to pull the neck a bit backward. So I want to maybe to rotate this a, a bit more like that and pull it a bit more and pull the neck a bit like that. Hope it does make sense what I'm saying. Yeah, the, the live stream will be available, I guess, when, when YouTube has finished to, you know, do it, uh, its thing in the background. So yeah, yeah, it will be available. Uh, so wh when you are streaming on YouTube, so I'm not recording the, the streaming on, uh, on my computer, okay? Uh, because I, I won't be editing it after a while. It will be too, too much, too much work. Maybe I will do a, compil a compilation like when everything is finished so that we can see the, the progress from start to, to end. But um, yeah, the, what I wanted to say is that it, it's getting recorded on YouTube. So I, I don't know, maybe a few hours after the end of the stream, it could be available uh, there. Yeah. So I, I will just, uh, not comparing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, there, there is uh, yeah, there are art, uh, art reviews, as you say. So we have one, Tomorrow morning, uh, there is a lecture or a, a demo. So our teacher will uh, show us some tips and techniques and we can ask questions on a specific topic. For example, balance, uh, technique to block, what to look at on a character. Um, and you can ask questions. And on Friday morning, we have art reviews where he takes um, we, we provide uh, a play blast like this and, uh, and uh, the 3D file and he just watch the whole animation like a hundred times and he takes note and say, okay, you should move this part like that. The timing here is off. Uh, she's, she's not balanced. The pose should be like this maybe, or he put you, uh, that's also very interesting, I feel. He gives you some clues or some new ideas, but they don't push you to do what I say. They say, maybe you, you, you should try this one. And so that's just that, especially when you're working from home. I mean, when you're not into a studio, adding like feedback from other people that give you new ideas is uh, pretty valuable for sure. So I will just reopen my review because I've closed it like. Okay. Micro. Thank you. 
Now, I think in this one, you can leave a little bit behind. So what I mean when I say leave a little bit behind, you've got the head right here, this is great. But on this one, maybe drag the head a little bit more down this way. This stuff is all great. Good. That's still a pretty big jump, I would say. Maybe she starts get a little bit of that elbow already on this frame. But yeah, so that's her transition really goes from there to there. So a little bit more like this, so that Uh, yeah, the the Discord server is still there. I will send an uh, invite. So what I do is that I um, I just create temporary, you know, uh, uh, links to avoid to be flowed because I've never run such a, a thing before I didn't want it to have like a uh, hundred, uh, I don't know, thousand people inviting other people and stuff like that. So I've put some restriction on the, on the server in a way, you know, just to avoid it to be like with too many people because it's, uh, you know, I'm, I, that's a lot, a lot of work. Every, uh, all those things, like even just Discord, just you know, a lot of, of distraction in a way. Um, so I, I do want to run a Discord server, you know, for the the people taking my classes or uh, buying my courses, because this is part of the, you know being kind or I don't know, or being there for the people that uh, trust you in a way. But it's a lot of work too. So here I will uh, slightly break the joints. So I, I will, I, I'm bending the, the arm in a way it should, it should not bend, but it's, it's, it's just to get a smoother transition from one pose to the other. You see here, it's like, it's going here very, very fast. So I will lower it a bit. And break it, break it a bit. Like the, the end and the, uh, and the elbow are, are flowing here. So, if you go from the camera view, it will make a, a nice arc if you follow the, the arm here. You see? I'm, I, <laughs> I was almost there, but you have the idea too. So th this is, yeah, this is, so this is the kind of thing you know, or if you don't know, Take the note because this is one of the most important things in animation. Uh, there is the timing for sure, but what you're drawing on screen, let's say, the, the motion of your character is drawing curve, arcs, and stuff like that, you know. For example, this one is uh, interesting 
if you follow the knee the this knee here i made a rotation toward the ground so that it does make sense when she kicked okay so i missed it it's more like that okay so you see the knee making this nice curve okay so th this was th this one was intentional okay <laughs> sometimes yeah you, you just forget but this one uh, i've been yeah working on this pose for a while feel like there should be something maybe here I will make her slightly more grounded and I will make another pose here later on, I think. Where she will be like um, a little lower than that and a, li a little like her cog here. Maybe I will try it right now. Because here she's moving forward. When she will get on this foot, she does something like that. Okay, I will flatten the foot. Like this one will drag so it, it will basically it will slide on the ground you know that's what when you you make a step forward like that it's uh, uh it's okay to drag the foot okay but here i will slightly lower the um, before she she throw the punch okay So that I, I get something like, like that in the motion as usual, you know, uh, an arc like that. Bah. And so she she will rotate the hips first. So I, I will favorize a bit the hips. The torso also will start rotating. A, a lot more to run. and uh, the shoulder and the arm will drag a bit meaning that uh, there will be they, they will arrive slightly later to the party so wh when you throw a punch like that in real life you do it correctly you will spin the elbow okay you need to uh, rotate your elbow uh, like that okay so when if you take fighting combat sport and, and stuff like that fighting lesson this is only your throw your punch this avoid you to uh, overextend your arm and uh, hurt your elbow and you will get more power into your punch and also it, it makes you naturally raise your shoulder toward your shin here and protect your face looks a, a lot smoother I, I will before we finished i will uh make a play blast so that we can see it real time because uh i was like oh that's too smooth or too but uh i'm losing like one third of the speed so it's yeah not that good like i i will stop at six the latest because uh, you know, I need to get back to normal life after a while. Yeah.
So basically, I, I think uh, I won't be able, I don't think, to finish the blocking, the, the wall blocking uh, today. I will probably be streaming tomorrow too. But the idea is to get into spline before Friday review. I'd like to start splining uh, before Friday. But there is a, a lot to be done on the end here. Because there, there is too, too many things happening. So I need to clean this up a bit. So here, I will just again slightly break the farm so we'll check here again I don't like the shape of the, the hand here It's uh, too broad and aligned with the camera, so I'm just rotating it a bit so that uh, it's not facing toward the camera that much. And maybe I, I can shift a bit here with those very slightly. And that, that looks pretty smooth yeah you can see the the arm making like a, a trail movement so that that's that's cool for me hey thanks <laughs> hope you will enjoy the the, the crimson running course I, I wasn't expecting that much people to be honest thank you very much for that. <laughs> That's very cool. Yes, so yeah, yeah, I think I think this is nice. She's dropping a bit her fist before the snap into the maybe I will so so what I did here for example you see if I uh, get rid of the dummy here the arm is uh, overextended okay there is the camera move so you, you may watch here that better you see, uh, I've straightened it and then there is a little, she's pulling it a bit, so it, it will snap on screen when she's uh, giving the punch. You see it, uh, and I did the same for the leg here. Here on the extreme, there is a, a micro stretch and then you see the, the leg pulling uh, back, okay? That really helps selling the the kick and it's fast enough so that you you can as they say, as our mentors say you can feel it but you can't see it so yeah that's absolutely what the the goal here. Okay, so I, I'm sorry, I, I will have to check again my, my review. Okay. Okay, yeah, I remember this. So basically here, it's on the jump kick. So I've made here a big arc with the arm, you see, tac, tac, okay. And while it may look cool arm-wise, 
what what told my uh, my mentor is that you need to find the the shortest pass between this pose and this one and this is not this and the thing is that uh, so i will have to like shorten the arm toward the the, the wrist okay and this um, this arc is not really supporting the animation because we should be focusing on the leg that will be kicking than this arm so here so this is typically the the kind of uh, feedback or uh, th thought let's say i wouldn't have myself and uh, this is one of of, of the the big benefits working with uh, yeah people that have been doing this for years because while i make i might make some mechanical choices like i know the arm is dragging so i may draw a nice you know a nice uh, curve here if it doesn't uh, serve the animation that's not a good idea yeah i mean it, it's going like super fast okay well when, when i watch it post to post here i'm not necessarily convinced but when i watch the animation it, it does work because i feel like the the harm is uh, going into the body to push the, the leg. I don't know if you have this feeling with the, you know, the, uh, I mean, with the streaming, it might not be as good as uh, what I'm seeing here, but uh, yeah, it definitely does work. So what I need to check now is that if it does make an arc, so it seems to be like, pretty yeah pretty pretty good so what i can do is use the motion trail or motion path so you've got it into the the armature uh, properties here i think motion pass you can set the range from let's say 65 to 75 calculate and yeah so from the camera here okay so we can see that it, it's it's a bit off on frame uh, 70 so i will fix this i will start slightly bending the arm inward okay and the shoulder should be dragging a bit okay something like that and you see i have a very clean arc here so instead of doing like an arc like very low and like that i just put it toward the torso here and that's some yeah some good kick for sure <laughs> um okay motion path i never know how to get rid of it uh, i think it's on the bone then i don't remember any anyone can tell me how to get rid of of this what is your pc configuration <laughs> You, you want me to, to make you jealous <laughs> that that's a pretty big workstation i put a lot of money into it like uh one year ago now so it's a thread reaper i don't remember the reference but it's the 24 calls 48 threads and i have a, a 2080 rtx ti and a lot of uh ram for sure and uh i set up a 
an SSD on NVMe, I think it's called like that. Then I want to get rid of this motion trailer now. Is anybody knows where? Uh, I don't remember where. Because I, I have it. Okay. <laughs> that, that doesn't help, you know. <laughs> okay, I, I will read this way. I don't know. Ah, that's. You should be able to close it at some point, but I don't remember where it was. Ah, uh, so here, yeah, here I was able to close it, but not before, I don't know why. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's fine. Uh, what time is it? Okay, so I will just check the notes again. And in 10 minutes, I will play Blast the animation so that we can see it in, uh, in real time. Oh, here, yeah, I have the... Yeah, so the, what my mentor is saying is that the the kick should be the point of focus, not the arm uh, dragging. So, I mean, I, I'm not like doing super clever stuff. I'm just, you know, watching the review and then explaining you what what's happening here. Okay, yeah. So now th those are our small details, but that will bring a lot. So on the kick, he also advised uh, to move the hips toward the foot, just here, something maybe, yeah, like that, just uh, a touch, you know, so that they will pop back them. And you have this, uh, like they are, uh, they, they will drag a bit after a while. Okay. So it's like, like it's, this kick is like a, a gunshot, you know. It's like full in your face and, and she, she puts so much energy into it that she, she gets almost dislocated. It's like that, this part here. Here I pulled her a lot, like, there is a lot of stretching, so it, I, I'm not necessarily aiming for cartoony style of animation. But um, even on Noara, for example, there are a lot of animation where on uh, I, I might share some Noara animation during the streamings, but uh, w there are some restriction. I can't show like a lot of animation I've done this year are still like. NDA or whatever you want to call this. Um, but uh, w when it got public, maybe uh, I will show you so, some of the stuff we, are, we have done. And I use a lot of this, a lot of stretching and squashing on, on very, like on one or two frame. And it does bring a lot to the, to the table for sure. So here, yeah, the idea is to uh, really track the head again, so you can see that the head is... So what, what he told us is that it's making... If I go into camera view here... The movement of the head here is uh, drawing a box, so it's stopped. And, and you don't want that, so one here, then here, then here. Okay. So even if it's the blocking stage, you should feel the the curvy movement. So whether you add another breakdown, if you have a fast movement like that, 
or uh, you just slightly uh, revise the pose. So I will just again check out the the notes. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I'm missing one one pose here. I should have watched the the review before I start the stream, but I didn't have time. To be honest, I've had a, like a, a twenty minute nap before I start the streaming because I was exhausted. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I, I will. I will probably uh, just play blast it so so that you can see how I play blast my animation, and I, I will continue on uh, tomorrow. I feel like at the same time frame, and hopefully this time uh, I won't. I won't do. Uh, I won't make like YouTube bugging often. So uh, I will show you. So I have set up camera for sure. I have my dummy here. So since I haven't changed the timing, it should fit. Okay, it does. I will switch to the other model here, which is a separated collection. I will enable the background, which is still in the uh, construction, let's say. And uh, the FX is it's just the nozzle flap from the gun here, okay? Because we, we can't really see the the bullets, okay? So you ju just have to read the animation. That's yeah. And the staging, what I call the stage, is, is just the camera and whatever we I have set onto the camera, okay? So in the output here, um, I'm not using, uh, you can use movie format whenever you are outputting your, your play blast. But uh, I prefer to use, uh, when I have time, um, to use PNG, okay, as usual. Okay, so uh, this is what I will do. I will go to view, viewport render animation. I won't be at rendering and um, do a, a classical render because there is no lightning and stuff like that. Um, so it will create me a PNG for each frame. In the metadata here, I've activated uh, the frame number. Oh, that's that's no good. I don't remember if I've saved before. Yeah, okay. So I, I'm recording the frame number here because whenever it does the review, it generally uh, tells you on frame 20 or on frame 50, you, you may uh, change this and that. And then I will, um, so I just load the, the PNG sequence into uh, After Effects. By default, After Effects loads the the pictures um, with a 30 frame per second uh, resin, so that's what we are using here. So I've already made this for sure. So it's the combo render. I will uh, reload the frames to make sure that this is the new one. <laughs> You've seen the, the shoulder moving a bit, yeah. Okay, and so what I have done here, I just put a few keyframe, additional keyframe in the end, so that we have a clear stop and not like the animation is just uh, uh, got finished and got closed as soon as you reach the latest. Uh, the latest frame and I will export this okay mm. 
No, no, I'm using Eevee. When I'm rendering animations, honestly, I haven't been using uh, cycles for uh, maybe two or three years now. Even for, so nowadays I don't work for customers that much. Uh, Noara is my main job and uh, the courses, uh, the YouTube channel and all those other stuff are also my, my main job. So I have those two activities, but I used to do a lot of movies for customers, you know, commercials and stuff like that using cycles and I've switched to EV like when the first year it was stable um, because for motion design and stuff like that you can really cheat with EV and get almost the same result as in cycles at least for a customer point of view and the time you will save is, is just like incomparable and it's it's really flexible to work on that. Okay, so I will keep doing like that. So there, there might be a bit of sound issue while I'm rendering, but it could be like super fast. So yeah, uh, I just use cycle whenever I'm running classes with students. So I had a class last week with uh, three students that are just, you know, they, they, uh, they want to learn Blender through their company or through generally from their company. So their company pay um, the training companies that hire me to train those people learning Blender. So this is where I explain of a bit of everything about Blender. Uh, <clears throat> so let's see how it looks now. So yeah, it's uh, a bit faster than that. So not that being big of a change, but um, yeah, no, I mean, I haven't screwed the animation at least. And uh, yeah, I just slowly putting the missing pieces in the different part of the animation. And this will sure help for polishing. I mean, when, when we have calculated the motion path of the hand, uh, this is more or less what, what the curve will show you. So we can see that already in the blocking, it's already like pretty clean. Uh, before the, the this training, I will probably have jumped into um, uh, splining way way earlier, and uh, I will still probably do this while in production. But but this is something even before I enter the school I was doing is that I do a lot more blocking. I do a lot more poses into blocking, and I spend a lot more time on each pose. And this is something they are really trying to, to put into our heads. This is the most important thing uh, for them is to, you know, have uh, a very good flow. And this is something you get when you have a nice silhouette, uh, a clear orientation and a believable weight in your character. And all of this should be translated into the the blocking and the posing stage so so it makes sense it's like it's uh, but it's very fun i mean uh, uh, i really love uh posing now well, when i started animation i was more into like spline because everything moves smoothly and you're happy about this but now when i start a new animation i I struggle a lot, but I also really enjoy the blocking stage. All right. Uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From your point of view, yeah, yeah. But this is you're paid to satisfy your customer, you know. So I always try to make uh, work that I'm happy with. 
but I also try to do it as fast as possible. So if I can render a frame in two seconds instead of 20 minutes and get 95% of the quality, mm, I won't hesitate that much. And, and it also allows your customers to make modification on the fly. You can change the color of the lightning or something like this. And re-render like a one minute sequence in five minutes maybe. So you're way more flexible and this is something customers really, really enjoy. So I have three minutes for you guys if you have any question. And if not, uh, I will just you know, stop the, the streaming here and thank you all. Blender or Maya, yeah. Uh, so I, I think I, I missed one message from Satoru about SFM. So might be uh, some software fighting or something like that. So again, my point of view is that we don't care about the software. A good animator will make good animation, whatever the software, and uh, a bad animator won't be better with the best software in the world. So at some point, it's important to, I mean, if I was like a pro animator working in a big studio, I will sure be working in Maya. That's, the, the, there is no doubt about it. And uh, I feel like you probably know Luciano Munoz. Luch, Lollipop Man, he has a nice uh, YouTube channel too, where he share animation tips. And he's working in the industry on big movies, uh, but he also work in Blender. Uh, so he, I mean, he, he would say the same thing. Maya is, is more powerful because there are years of experience on the software that you don't have on Blender. But Blender is getting better, but Blender, I don't think it, I don't know. I don't know. Because Maya, I, I, I heard a lot of troubles with the, the fact that Maya is not updated like uh, super often, so, or not as, as fast as Blender. So maybe we'll have some good uh, surprise, but for the time being, uh, animation tools and, and rigging tools in Blender are, are not as evolved or uh, efficient as Maya, as Maya's tool. And, and you know that I'm a big Blender <laughs> fan. I do all my business with Blender, so I'm not here to say that uh, one is better than the other, but uh, for coding in the same, I mean, uh, we have all seen the updates, uh, the sculpting tool updates on Blender that are just crazy good, but it's not as good as and, and, and as powerful as ZBrush. And there is really a wall between the two, but you can do so much with Blender that for a lot of job, it's way enough. And this is, I think the, I will end with this um you can absolutely make a good living and, and reach pro level production with blender okay but if you want to create like if you're working in a company with less than 100 people for example i think blender is the best fit because it's super flexible it's free but uh if you go to i don't know ilm ubisoft or thing like that and you ask them hey i don't want to learn Maya or whatever, you should switch to Blender and they will just laugh because they have developed tools on Maya and Maya is way more powerful, for example, to communicate with the Unreal Engine or in-house engine. So 
So yeah, yeah. Don't be. I mean, Blender is the perfect tool to learn uh, uh, 3D and CG because you you can learn nodes, you can do procedural faders, and once you're comfortable with Blender, switching to uh, Substance Designer, it's like a matter of days. Like in three days, you you can do the same things and push it further. The, the only thing I think that Blender really, really lacks and really is, uh, I feel like it's absolutely not comparable to any specialized software is texture painting. The way Blender deals with texture painting is, uh, is not good the way you set the material, etc. But not because Blender is not good, because Blender is not made for this kind of task and that's that's it. Because when you open Substance Painter and when you work in Substance Painter, it's so easy. I mean, to to set your materials and stuff. While in Blender, it's a bit uh, even with add-ons and stuff. Um, yeah, that's tedious for sure. Okay, so I will end up the streaming here. Uh, and uh, yeah, I want to thank you all for having for joining the stream. I will just switch to the camera so that you can see my happy face. I will probably stream tomorrow too at the same uh, same time frame. So I will just you know make a, some Twitter post or something like that.